Throughout this course, you have learned how to use data to create models that help you solve a variety of problems in business. We started with models to make predictions and then move to models that prescribe solutions. In the previous video, we introduced the idea of merging two analytic technologies, simulation and optimization. By setting chance constraints, we were able to account for the uncertainty in some key input data to an optimization model. In this video, we're going to build on that and describe how simulation and optimization can be fully integrated. The process of developing a simulation optimization model is not very different from what we have been doing. It requires the definition of the three main elements of an optimization model. That is, the decision variables, constraints, and the objective function. In addition, we need to identify the sources of uncertainty that will be part of the simulation model. Let's consider the following situation. An investor is considering four assets to invest $100,000. The annual return of each asset is the major source of uncertainty in this decision problem. Through a statistical analysis of historical data, the investor has found probability distribution functions to model the annual return of each asset. The functions and the limits on the amounts that she feels comfortable investing in each asset are shown in this table. The annual return of bonds is assumed to be a uniform distribution between 4% and 6%. The returns of a stock follow a log normal distribution with mean of 11% and a standard deviation of 4%. The returns of mutual funds is considered to follow a normal distribution with mean of 8% and a standard deviation of 1%. The money market is considered to have a fixed return of 1%. In addition, the investor must deal with other risks, such as changes in the economy or major global events. One way to account for such uncertainty is to consider risk factors for each asset as shown in this table. Negative values represent low risk, and values greater than 1 represent high risk. The investor specifies a limit on the total amount of risk per dollar invested. Let's assume that in the case of our investor, she has set a risk factor limit of 100000 The problem is to find how to invest the $100,000 in order to maximize total expected return by staying within the investment limits set by the investor and by not exceeding the total risk factor. Locate and open the Excel file for a folio optimization. The top table in the spreadsheet contains the data for the four assets that the investor is considering. First, we have the parameters of the probability distribution functions. Then there are the investment limits for each asset. And then we have the risk factors. The model is in the bottom table. As usual, the light gold cells indicate the decision variables. In this case, the decisions are the amounts to be invested in each asset. The total in this column is the sum of all the investments which needs to be less than or equal to $100,000. The risk for each asset is the product of the risk factor and the amount invested. The total risk must be less than or equal to $100,000. The return for the first three assets is a random variable. As we have done in all our models, the uncertain cells are shown in green. They contain the probability distribution functions. A uniform distribution for bonds a log normal distribution for stocks, and a normal distribution for mutual funds. The value column contains the return value in dollars. The sum of this column is the total return value that we're maximizing. We use light orange for the total value cell to indicate that this is both the output of the simulation and also the objective function value for the optimization. Click on the ASP tab to access the solver model panel. The optimization model consists of maximizing E14, which is the total value of the returns. The decision variables are the investment locations in B10 to B13. There are two constraints, one for the total amount invested and one for the total risk. In this simulation model, we have the uncertainty variables of the annual returns in cells D10 to D12, and we have the uncertainty output function E14. 
This is the solution that ASP found for this problem. This visible solution meets all the criteria specified by the investor. The value in E14 is not the expected return. It is just one trial of the simulation using the values of the decision variables. To find out more about the performance of this portfolio, double click on E14. The expected return of this portfolio is estimated to be $6,352. The frequency distribution can be used to estimate probabilities that the portfolio achieves some desired return levels. For example, the simulation predicts that there is a 9.96% probability that the return will be $8,000 or more. Simulation optimization is one of the most sophisticated tools in data analytics for business. It allows you to create models that include many of the complexities of business decisions. In many ways, these models can be considered to be at the highest level of the analytical process. With this, we conclude our course on data analytics for decision making. I hope that this course has given you insights in how to use data to create models that can help businesses make better decisions.